Oxycodone, Wikipedia article audio. Oxycodone is a semisynthetic opioid synthesized from thebaine, an opioid alkaloid found in the Persian poppy, and one of the many alkaloids found in the opium poppy. It is a moderately potent opioid pain medication, generally indicated for relief of moderate to severe pain. Oxycodone was developed in 1917 in Germany as one of several semi-synthetic opioids in an attempt to improve on the existing opioids. Medical Uses Administration Side Effects Dependence, Addiction, and Withdrawal Hormone Imbalance Interactions Pharmacodynamics Controversy Pharmacokinetics Absorption Distribution Metabolism Activity contribution of metabolites Variation Elimination Bioavailability Morphine equivalency Chemistry Biosynthesis Detection in biological fluids History Society and culture Legal status General Australia Canada Oxycodone is available as single ingredient medication in immediate release and controlled release. In the United Kingdom, it is available in 10 mg ml and 50 mg ml formulation for intramuscular or intravenous administration. Combination products are also available as immediate release formulations, with non narcotic analgesic ingredients such as paracetamol and non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs, including aspirin and ibuprofen. Canadian Legislative Changes Canadian Lawsuits As it has euphoric effects similar to other opioids, oxycodone is one of the drugs abused in the current opioid epidemic in the United States. An abuse deterrent combination with naloxone is available in managed release tablets. If injected, the naloxone precipitates opioid withdrawal symptoms and blocks the effect of the medication. However, there have been concerns raised about the effectiveness of the abuse prevention measures. Germany Hong Kong Oxycodone has been in clinical use since 1916, and it is used for managing moderate to moderately severe acute or chronic pain. It has been found to improve quality of life for those with many types of pain. Experts are divided regarding use for non-cancer-related chronic pain, as most opioids have great potential for dependence and have also been alleged to create paradoxical pain sensitivity. Oxycodone is available as controlled release tablet, intended to be taken every 12 hours. A 2006 review found that controlled release oxycodone is comparable to instant release oxycodone, morphine, and hydromorphone in management of moderate to severe cancer pain, with fewer side effects than morphine. The author concluded that the controlled release form is a valid alternative to morphine and a first line treatment for cancer pain. In 2014, the European Association for Palliative Care recommended oral oxycodone as a second-line alternative to oral morphine for cancer pain. In the U.S., extended-release oxycodone is approved for use in children as young as 11 years old. The approved indication is for relief of cancer pain, trauma pain, or pain due to major surgery, in children already treated with opioids who can tolerate at least 20 mg per day of oxycodone, this provides an alternative to duragesic the only other extended-release opioid analgesic approved for children.
In the United States, oxycodone is only approved for oral use, available as tablets and oral solutions. In Spain, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom, oxycodone is also approved for intravenous and intramuscular use. When first introduced in Germany during World War I, both for and IM administrations of oxycodone were commonly used for post-operative pain management of Central Powers soldiers. Serious side effects of oxycodone include reduced sensitivity to pain, euphoria, anxiolysis, feelings of relaxation, and respiratory depression. Common side effects of oxycodone include constipation, nausea, vomiting, somnolence, dizziness, itching, dry mouth, and sweating. Less common side effects include loss of appetite, nervousness, abdominal pain, diarrhea, urine retention, dyspnea, and hiccups. In high doses, overdoses, or in some persons not tolerant to opioids, oxycodone can cause shallow breathing, slowed heart rate, cold-slash-clammy skin, pauses in breathing, low blood pressure, constricted pupils, circulatory collapse, respiratory arrest, and death. Oxycodone overdose has also been described to cause spinal cord infarction in high doses and ischemic damage to the brain, due to prolonged hypoxia from suppressed breathing. Oxycodone in combination with naloxone in managed release tablets, has been formulated to both deter abuse and reduce opioid-induced constipation. The risk of experiencing severe withdrawal symptoms is high if a patient has become physically dependent and discontinues oxycodone abruptly. Medically, when the drug has been taken regularly over an extended period, it is withdrawn gradually rather than abruptly. People who regularly use oxycodone recreationally or at higher than prescribed doses are at even higher risk of severe withdrawal symptoms. The symptoms of oxycodone withdrawal, as with other opioids, may include anxiety, panic attack, nausea, insomnia, muscle pain, muscle weakness, fevers, and other flu-like symptoms. Withdrawal symptoms have also been reported in newborns whose mothers had been either injecting or orally taking oxycodone during pregnancy. As with other opioids, Chronic use of oxycodone often causes concurrent hypogonadism or hormone imbalance. Oxycodone is metabolized by the enzyme CYP3A4 and CYP2D6, and its clearance therefore can be altered by inhibitors and inducers of these enzymes. Natural genetic variation in these enzymes can also influence the clearance of oxycodone which may be related to the wide inter-individual variability in its half-life and potency. Ritonavir or lopinavir slash ritonavir greatly increase plasma concentrations of oxycodone in healthy human volunteers due to inhibition of CYP3A4 and CYP2D6. Rifampicin greatly reduces plasma concentrations of oxycodone due to strong induction of CYP3A4. There is also a case report of phosphonatoin, a CYP3A4 inducer, dramatically reducing the analgesic effects of oxycodone in a chronic pain patient. Dosage or medication adjustments may be necessary in each case. Oxycodone is a highly selective full agonist of the muopioid receptor, with low affinity for the delta opioid receptor and kappa opioid receptor. After oxycodone binds to the more, AG protein complex is released, which inhibits the release of neurotransmitters by the cell by reducing the amount of CAMP produced, closing calcium channels, and opening potassium channels. Similarly to most other opioids, oxycodone increases prolactin secretion, but its influence on testosterone levels is unknown. Unlike morphine, 
oxycodone lacks immunosuppressive activity, the clinical relevance of this has not been clarified. In 1997, a group of Australian researchers proposed that oxycodone acts on cores, unlike morphine, which acts upon mores. Further research by this group indicated the drug appears to be a kappa 2B opioid agonist. However, this conclusion has been disputed, primarily on the basis that oxycodone produces effects that are typical of mu opioid agonists. In 2006, research by a Japanese group suggested the effect of oxycodone is mediated by different receptors in different situations. Specifically in diabetic mice, the kappa opioid receptor appears to be involved in the antinociceptive effects of oxycodone, while in non-diabetic mice, the mu1 opioid receptor seems to be primarily responsible for these effects. After a dose of conventional oral oxycodone, the onset of action is 10-30 minutes, and peak plasma levels of the drug are attained within roughly 30-60 minutes, in contrast, after a dose of oxycontin, peak plasma levels of oxycodone occur in about 3 hours. The duration of instant release oxycodone is 3 to 6 hours, although this can be variable depending on the individual. Oxycodone in the blood is distributed to skeletal muscle, liver, intestinal tract, lungs, spleen, and brain. Conventional oral preparations start to reduce pain within 10-15 minutes on an empty stomach, in contrast, OxyContin starts to reduce pain within one hour. The metabolism of oxycodone in humans is extensive and complex, with many minor pathways and resulting metabolites. Around 10% of a dose of oxycodone is excreted essentially unchanged in the urine. The major metabolites of oxycodone are norexicodone, noroxymorphone, and oxymorphone. The immediate metabolism of oxycodone in humans is as follows. In humans, endimethylation of oxycodone to noroxycodone by CYP3A4 is the major metabolic pathway, accounting for 45% plus or minus 21% of a dose of oxycodone while odimethylation of oxycodone into oxymorphone by CYP2D6 and 6-keto reduction of oxycodone into 6-oxycodols represent relatively minor metabolic pathways, accounting for 11% plus or minus 6% and 8% plus or minus 6% of a dose of oxycodone, respectively. Several of the immediate metabolites of oxycodone are subsequently conjugated with glucuronic acid and excreted in the urine. 6-alpha-oxycodol and 6-beta-oxycodol are further metabolized by endimethylation to nor-6-alpha-oxycodol and nor-6-beta-oxycodol, respectively, and by N-oxidation to 6-alpha-oxycodol anoxide and 6-beta-oxycodol anoxide respectively respectively. Oxymorphone is also further metabolized, as follows. The first pathway of the above three accounts for 40% of the metabolism of oxymorphone, making oxymorphone 3-glucuronide the main metabolite of oxymorphone, while the latter two pathways account for less than 10% of the metabolism of oxymorphone. After endimethylation of oxymorphone, noroxymorphone is further glucuronidate to noroxymorphone 3-glucuronide. A few of the metabolites of oxycodone have also been found to be active as more agonists, some of which notably have much higher affinity for the more in comparison. Oxymorphone possesses 3 to 5 fold higher affinity for the more than does oxycodone, while noroxycodone and noroxymorphone possess 1 third of and 3 fold higher affinity for the more, respectively, and more activation is 5 to 10 fold less with noroxycodone but 2 fold higher with noroxymorphone relative to oxycodone.
Noroxicodone, noroxymorphone, and oxymorphone also have longer half-lives than oxycodone. However, despite the greater in vitro activity of some of its metabolites, it has been determined that oxycodone itself is responsible for 83.0% and 94.8% of its analgesic effect following oral and intravenous administration, respectively. Oxymorphone plays only a minor role, being responsible for 15.8% and 4.5% of the analgesic effect of oxycodone after oral and intravenous administration, respectively. Although the CYP2D6 genotype and the route of administration result in differential rates of oxymorphone formation, the unchanged parent compound remains the major contributor to the overall analgesic effect of oxycodone. In contrast to oxycodone and oxymorphone, noroxycodone and noroxymorphone, while also potent more agonists, poorly cross the blood-brain barrier into the central nervous system, and for this reason, are only minimally analgesic in comparison. In accordance, while higher CYP2D6 activity increases the effects of oxycodone, higher CYP3A4 activity has the opposite effect, and decreases the effects of oxycodone. Oxycodone is metabolized by the cytochrome P450 enzyme system in the liver, making it vulnerable to drug interactions. Some people are fast metabolizers resulting in reduced analgesic effect, but increased adverse effects, while others are slow metabolizers, resulting in increased toxicity without improved analgesia. The dose of oxycodone must be reduced in patients with reduced hepatic function. Oxycodone and its metabolites are mainly excreted in the urine and sweat, therefore, it accumulates in patients with kidney impairment. N-demethylation to noroxicodone predominantly via CYP3A4, O-demethylation to oxymorphone predominantly via CYP2D6, 6-keto reduction to 6-alpha and 6-beta-oxycodol, and oxidation to oxycodone and oxide. Japan Singapore United Kingdom United States Recreational use Effects Preventive measures Australia 2 Canada 2 United Kingdom 2 United States 2 Economics Names Available forms 3-glucuronidation to oxymorphone 3-glucuronide predominantly via UGT2B7, 6-keto-reduction to 6-alpha-oxymorphol and 6-beta-oxymorphol, and demethylation to noroxymorphone. Oxycodone has a hydroxy group at carbon-14, oxycodone has a 7,8-dihydro feature. Codeine has a double bond between those two carbons, and, oxycodone has a carbonyl group in place of the hydroxyl group of codeine. Immediate release oxycodone, controlled release oxycodone 12 hour duration, oxycodone tamper resistant, immediate release oxycodone with paracetamol, immediate release oxycodone with aspirin, immediate release oxycodone with ibuprofen. Controlled release oxycodone with naloxone 12 hour duration, controlled release oxycodone with naltrexone 12 hour duration pending regulatory approval. Oxycodone can be administered orally, intranasally, via intravenous, intramuscular, or subcutaneous injection, or rectally. The bioavailability of oral administration of oxycodone averages 60-87%, with rectal administration yielding the same results, intranasal varies between individuals with a mean of 46%. Taken orally, 
20 mg of immediate release oxycodone is equivalent to 30 mg of morphine. Extended release oxycodone is considered to be twice as potent as oral morphine. Oxycodone's chemical name is derived from codeine. The chemical structures are very similar, differing only in that. It is also similar to hydrocodone, differing only in that it has a hydroxyl group at carbon-14. Oxycodone is marketed as various salts, most commonly as the hydrochloride salt. The free base conversion ratios of different salts are, hydrochloride, bitartrate, tartrate, camphosulfonate, pectinate, phenylpropionate, sulfate, phosphate, and terephthalate. The hydrochloride salt is the basis of most American oxycodone products whilst bitartrate, tartrate, pectinate, terephthalate, and phosphate salts are also available in European products. Methiiodide and hydroiodide are mentioned in older European publications. In terms of biosynthesis, oxycodone has been found naturally in nectar extracts from the orchid family Epipactes helleborine, together along with another opioid, 3,3-indol, 7,8-dihydro, 4,5-epoxy, 3,6-demorphanin. Oxycodone and slash or its major metabolites may be measured in blood or urine to monitor for clearance, abuse, confirm a diagnosis of poisoning, or assist in a medical legal death investigation. Many commercial opiate screening tests cross-react appreciably with oxycodone and its metabolites, but chromatographic techniques can easily distinguish oxycodone from other opiates. Freund and Speyer of the University of Frankfurt in Germany first synthesized oxycodone from Thebaine in 1916, a few years after the German pharmaceutical company Bayer had stopped the mass production of heroin due to hazardous use, harmful use, and dependence. It was hoped that a Thebaine-derived drug would retain the analgesic effects of morphine and heroin with less dependence. Unfortunately. This was ultimately not found to be the case. The first clinical use of the drug was documented in 1917, the year after it was first developed. It was first introduced to the U.S. market in May 1939. In early 1928, Merck introduced a combination product containing scopolamine, oxycodone, and ephedrine under the German initials for the ingredients C, which was later renamed Scofidal. This combination is essentially an oxycodone analogue of the morphine-based twilight sleep, with ephedrine added to reduce circulatory and respiratory effects. The personal notes of Adolf Hitler s physician Dr. Theodore Morel, indicate Hitler received repeated injections of Yakotal. In the early 1970s, the United States government classified oxycodone as a Schedule II drug. Purdue Pharma, a privately held company based in Stamford, Connecticut, developed the prescription painkiller OxyContin. Upon its release in 1995, OxyContin was hailed as a medical breakthrough, a long-lasting narcotic that could help patients suffering from moderate to severe pain. The drug became a blockbuster, and has reportedly generated some $35 billion in revenue for Purdue. Oxycodone is subject to international conventions on narcotic drugs. In addition, Oxycodone is subject to national laws that differ by country. The 1931 Convention for Limiting the Manufacture and Regulating the Distribution of Narcotic Drugs of the League of Nations included oxycodone. The 1961 Single Convention on Narcotic Drugs of the United Nations, which replaced the 1931 Convention, 
categorized oxycodone in Schedule I Global restrictions on Schedule I drugs include limit exclusively to medical and scientific purposes the production, manufacture, export, import, distribution of, trade in, use and possession of these drugs, require medical prescriptions for the supply or dispensation of drugs to individuals, and prevent the accumulation of quantities of these drugs in excess of those required for the normal conduct of business. Oxycodone is in Schedule I of the Commonwealth's Narcotic Drugs Act 1967. In addition, it is in Schedule VIII of the Australian Standard for the Uniform Scheduling of Drugs and Poisons, meaning it is a controlled drug which should be available for use but require restriction of manufacture, supply, distribution, possession, and use to reduce abuse, misuse and physical or psychological dependence. Oxycodone is a controlled substance under Schedule I of the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act. In February 2012, Ontario passed legislation to allow the expansion of an already existing drug tracking system for publicly funded drugs to include those that are privately insured. This database will function to identify and monitor patients' attempts to seek prescriptions from multiple doctors or retrieve from multiple pharmacies. Other provinces have proposed similar legislation, while some, such as Nova Scotia, have legislation already in effect for monitoring prescription drug use. These changes have coincided with other changes in Ontario's legislation to target the misuse of painkillers and high addiction rates to drugs such as oxycodone. As of February 29, 2012, Ontario passed legislation delisting oxycodone from the province's public drug benefit program. This was a first for any province to delist a drug based on addictive properties. The new law prohibits prescriptions for Oxineo except to certain patients under the Exceptional Access Program including palliative care and in other extenuating circumstances. Patients already prescribed oxycodone will receive coverage for an additional year for Oxineo, and after that, it will be disallowed unless designated under the Exceptional Access Program. Much of the legislative activity has stemmed from Purdue Pharma's decision in 2011 to begin a modification of OxyContin's composition to make it more difficult to crush for snorting or injecting. The new formulation, OxyNeo, is intended to be preventative in this regard and retain its effectiveness as a painkiller. Since introducing its Narcotics Safety and Awareness Act, Ontario has committed to focusing on drug addiction, particularly in the monitoring and identification of problem opioid prescriptions, as well as the education of patients, doctors, and pharmacists. This Act, introduced in 2010, commits to the establishment of a unified database to fulfill this intention. Both the public and medical community have received the legislation positively, though concerns about the ramifications of legal changes have been expressed. Because laws are largely provincially regulated, many speculate a national strategy is needed to prevent smuggling across provincial borders from jurisdictions with looser restrictions. In 2015, Purdue Pharma's abuse-resistant OxyNeo and six generic versions of OxyContin had been on the Canada-wide approved list for prescriptions since 2012. In June 2015, then-Federal Minister of Health Rona Ambrose announced that within three years all oxycodone products sold in Canada would need to be tamper-resistant. Some experts warned that the generic product manufacturers may not have the technology to achieve that goal, possibly giving Purdue Pharma a monopoly on this opiate. Several class action suits across Canada have been launched against the Purdue group of companies and affiliates. 
Claimants argue the pharmaceutical manufacturers did not meet a standard of care and were negligent in doing so. These lawsuits reference earlier judgments in the United States, which held that Purdue was liable for wrongful marketing practices and misbranding. Since 2007, the Purdue companies have paid over $1.650 million in settling litigation or facing criminal fines. The drug is in Appendix 3 of the Narcotics Act. The law allows only physicians, dentists, and veterinarians to prescribe oxycodone and the federal government to regulate the prescriptions. Oxycodone is regulated under Part I of Schedule I of Hong Kong's Chapter 134 Dangerous Drugs Ordinance. Oxycodone is a restricted drug in Japan. Its import and export is strictly restricted to specially designated organizations having prior permit to import it. In a high-profile case an American who was a top Toyota executive living in Tokyo, who claimed to be unaware of the law, was arrested for importing oxycodone into Japan. Oxycodone is listed as a Class A drug in the Misuse of Drugs Act of Singapore, which means offences in relation to the drug attract the most severe level of punishment. A conviction for unauthorized manufacture of the drug attracts a minimum sentence of 10 years of imprisonment and corporal punishment of five strokes of the cane, and a maximum sentence of life imprisonment or 30 years of imprisonment and 15 strokes of the cane. The minimum and maximum penalties for unauthorized trafficking in the drug are respectively five years of imprisonment and five strokes of the cane and 20 years of imprisonment and 15 strokes of the cane. Oxycodone is a Class A drug under the Misuse of Drugs Act. For Class A drugs, which are considered to be the most likely to cause harm, possession without a prescription is punishable by up to seven years in prison, an unlimited fine, or both. Dealing of the drug illegally is punishable by up to life imprisonment, an unlimited fine, or both. In addition, oxycodone is a Schedule II drug per the Misuse of Drugs Regulations 2001 which provide certain exemptions from the provisions of the Misuse of Drugs Act 1971. Under the Controlled Substances Act, enacted in 1971 by President Richard Nixon, Oxycodone is a Schedule II controlled substance whether by itself or part of a multi-ingredient medication. The DEA lists oxycodone both for sale and for use in manufacturing other opioids as XC9143 and in 2013 approved the following annual aggregate manufacturing quotas, 131.5 metric tons for sale down from 153.75 in 2012, and 10.25 metric tons for conversion, unchanged from the previous year. Oxycodone, like other opioid analgesics, tends to induce feelings of euphoria, relaxation, and reduced anxiety in those who are occasional users. These effects make it one of the most commonly abused pharmaceutical drugs in the United States. In August 2010, Purdue Pharma reformulated their long-acting oxycodone line, marketed as OxyContin, using a polymer, intact, to make the pills extremely difficult to crush or dissolve in water to reduce OxyContin abuse. The FDA approved relabeling the reformulated version as abuse-resistant in April 2013. Pfizer manufactures a preparation of short-acting oxycodone, marketed as Oxecta, which contains inactive ingredients, referred to as tamper-resistant aversion technology. It does not deter oral abuse. Approved by the FDA in the U.S. in June 2011, the new formulation makes crushing, chewing, snorting, or injecting the opioid impractical because of a change in its chemical properties. 
The non-medical use of oxycodone existed from the early 1970s, but by 2015, 91% of a national sample of injecting drug users in Australia had reported using oxycodone, and 27% had injected it in the last six months. Opioid-related deaths in Ontario had increased by 242% from 1969 to 2014. By 2009 in Ontario there were more deaths from oxycodone overdose than from cocaine overdose. Deaths from opioid pain relievers had increased from 13.7 deaths per million residents in 1991 to 27.2 deaths per million residents in 2004. The abuse of oxycodone in Canada became a problem. Areas where oxycodone is most problematic are Atlantic Canada and Ontario, where its abuse is prevalent in rural towns and in many smaller to medium-sized cities. Oxycodone is also widely available across Western Canada, but methamphetamine and heroin are more serious problems in the larger cities, while oxycodone is more common in rural towns. Oxycodone is diverted through doctor shopping, prescription forgery, pharmacy theft, and overprescribing. The recent formulations of oxycodone, particularly Purdue Pharma's Crush, CHU, injection and dissolve-resistant OxyNeO which replaced the banned OxyContin product in Canada in early 2012, have led to a decline in the abuse of this opiate but have increased the abuse of the more potent drug fentanyl. According to a Canadian Centre on Substance Abuse study quoted in Maclean's magazine, there were at least 655 fentanyl-related deaths in Canada in a five-year period. In Alberta, the Blood Tribe Police claimed that from the fall of 2014 through January 2015, oxycodone pills or a lethal fake variation referred to as oxyadies containing fentanyl made in illegal labs by members of organized crime were responsible for 10 deaths on the blood reserve which is located southwest of Lethbridge, Alberta. Province-wide, approximately 120 Albertans died from fentanyl-related overdoses in 2014. Abuse and diversion of oxycodone in the UK commenced in the early to mid-2000s. The first known death due to overdose in the UK occurred in 2002. However, Recreational use remains relatively rare. In the United States, more than 12 million people use opioid drugs recreationally. In 2010, 16,652 deaths were related to opioid overdose in combination with other drugs such as benzodiazepines and alcohol. In September 2013, the FDA released new labeling guidelines for long-acting and extended-release opioids requiring manufacturers to remove moderate pain as indication for use, instead stating the drug is for pain severe enough to require daily, around-the-clock, long-term opioid treatment. The updated labeling will not restrict physicians from prescribing opioids for moderate, as-needed use. Oxycodone is the most widely recreationally used opioid in America. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services estimates that about 11 million people in the U.S. consume oxycodone in a non-medical way annually. In 2007, about 42,800 emergency room visits occurred due to episodes involving oxycodone. Diverted oxycodone may be taken orally or ingested through insufflation, used intravenously, or the heated vapors inhaled. In 2008, recreational use of oxycodone and hydrocodone were involved in 14,800 deaths. Some of the cases were due to overdoses of the acetaminophen component, resulting in fatal liver damage. 
reformulated OxyContin is causing some recreational users to change to heroin, which is cheaper and easier to obtain. The International Narcotics Control Board estimated 11.5 short tons of oxycodone were manufactured worldwide in 1998, by 2007 this figure had grown to 75.2 short tons. United States accounted for 82% of consumption in 2007 at 51.6 short tons. Canada, Germany, Australia and France combined accounted for 13% of consumption in 2007. In 2010, 1.3 short tons of oxycodone were illegally manufactured using a fake pill imprint. This accounted for 0.8% of consumption. These illicit tablets were later seized by the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, according to the International Narcotics Control Board. The board also reported 122.5 short tons manufactured in 2010. This number had decreased from a record high of 135.9 short tons in 2009. Expanded expression for the compound oxycodone in the academic literature include dihydrohydroxycodionone, eucodal, eucodal, 14-hydroxidehydrocodionone, and nicodan. In a UNESCO convention, the translations of oxycodone are oxycodon, oxycodone, oxycodona, and the word oxycodone should not be confused with oxandrolone, oxazepam, oxybutanin, oxytocin, or roxanol. Oxycodone is available in a variety of formulations for oral or sublingual administration. Parenteral formulations of oxycodone are also available, and are widely used in Europe.